Hi guys, welcome back to K World. Today I'll be summarizing the 2021 movie Mission Possible. With a plot spoiler alert, let's get to it. The Chinese Ministry of State Security is informed about weapons being smuggled to North Korea. When they try to intercept the smugglers, the smugglers kill all the police officers, leaving only one officer to escape. The Chinese government becomes aware of the smuggling and learns that the weapons are now being transported to South Korea. The bureau director, together with team leader Chao, attempts to distance themselves from the situation and sends the rookie officer Wang Iring on a suicide mission to investigate and capture the smugglers, intending to declare it a failed mission with Iring's death. Chao reluctantly assigns Iring to the mission and advises her to go by the name Yu Dehi while working in South Korea. Chao meets with NIS agent Shin Kiru and asks for his help in assisting Iring. Kiru agrees and approaches Wu Su Han, a detective and former NIS agent who now runs a private detective agency, to sublet his office for a month for the investigation. Despite not receiving any information about the mission, Su Han, who is already facing financial difficulties, readily agrees. However, Kiru is hit by a truck on his way back and is unable to return to the office with a payment for Su Han. Not knowing about Kiru's accident, Iring, who now goes by the name Dehi, visits Su Han's office expecting to meet Kiru. Mistaking Su Han for Kiru, Dehi briefs him about the investigation and their target Park Dusik, a rare earth element importer from China who is involved in arms smuggling. Dehi is also informed about Dusik's regular attendance at a tango cafe. The two plan to attend the cafe and acquire his phone to clone it. Su Han and Dehi go to the tango class dressed up, which amuses everyone in the class. As planned, they manage to steal Du Six's phone, but Su Han realizes he cannot clone it as it is a flip phone. However, he does notice a text from someone named Mr. John, threatening to report to the police if Du Six does not answer his phone call by a certain day. So Su Han returns the phone, and Du Six receives a phone call. While talking to the caller outside the cafe, a masked man injects him with something, and Du Six is killed in the cafe. His death is reported as due to a heart attack, and Dae He and Su Han are called into the police station, as members of the Tango Cafe find them suspicious. However, because there is no evidence against them, they are released. But the police chief finds them suspicious, so he decides to investigate them further. The next day, Su Han and Dae He receive news that the rodeo mob boss has been shot while leaving his club. Assuming that the smuggled guns are starting to be sold, Su Han goes with Dae He to meet a fortune teller who is famous among gangsters to gather information about the murder. From the fortune teller, they learn about the Axe clan, which is the rival gang of the rodeo boss's gang. So Dehi and Su Han go to meet the boss of the Axe clan at their headquarters. While interrogating the gang boss, the gang gets attacked by masked men. Su Han and Dehi retrieve the gang boss's phone and escape. With the help of a hacker, they manage to get the address of a broker. When they arrive, they find the broker dead and conclude that he was killed about three days ago. They search through the house and learn that the broker's name is Kim Young-gu, the security head of Mugwang International, and also learn about its executive director John Hoon. Su Han remembers the text he saw on Du Sik's phone and assumes that John Hoon is the one who threatened Du Sik. They also learn about a celebration at the Alvin Hotel the next day, where overseas adoptees are also invited. Meanwhile, the police investigate the crime scene of the Axe clan. While inspecting the CCTV footage, they notice Dae Hee and Su Han and recognize them as the Tango couple. The NIS also begins to follow Dae Hee and realizes that she was sent as a sacrifice by the Chinese to die in the mission and to blame South Korea for the gun smuggling. The next day, Su Han reports Young Gu's murder, and the chief finds a card Su Han had accidentally dropped, realizing the duo was present at the scene. Meanwhile, Su Han and Dae Hee go to the celebration and introduce themselves as adoptees. Dae Hee plants a microphone on John Hoon while greeting him. Despite knowing that John Hoon is their boss's killer, the Axe clan proceeds with an arms deal to sell weapons at midnight. With the microphone, Dae Hee learns about the deal. One of Jae Hoon's men recognizes Su Han from the previous attack on the Axe clan and reports to Jae Hoon. Dae Hee overhears that they are being exposed and tries to escape, but they get captured. Su Han tries to convince them that they are not involved in the gun smuggling investigation, so John Hoon orders Su Han to kill all the officers at a local police station, in exchange for setting them free. He is escorted to the police station by John Hoon's men, but he fights them off and returns to the hotel to find Dae Hee. However, he attracts the attention of the police as well. When he arrives at the hotel, he discovers that Dae Hee has been taken somewhere else. He gets arrested and taken to the police station. During the interrogation, the chief demands that Su Han make a call to Dae Hee. She informs him about the location where the gun smuggle is going to take place using code. Su Han gets visited by the NIS, and he learns about Dae Hee's true identity as a Chinese agent sent as a sacrifice to die in the mission. He then escapes from the police station and heads to the location of the gun smuggling. He rescues Dae Hee, and together they fight the gangsters, resulting in John Hoon and the surviving gangsters getting arrested. Su Han is also arrested, but is offered a deal by the NIS to become a secret agent in exchange for his release. Su Han agrees, and he is paired up with Dae Hee and sent to Russia for their next mission. With that, the movie ends. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.